I'm talking about the term embodiment. What does that even mean? It's something that's thrown around in the personal development world a lot, you know, the importance of becoming embodied. But what does it really mean and why does it matter and how can you achieve it? That's what I want to cover today. I'm Natalie Murray. I am a deep transformation mentor for courageous and spiritual female leaders who've had past trauma. And despite all the work they've done themselves, at most of the time, often they still feel triggered into feeling like a scared, angry, hurt or lonely little girl inside who keeps giving a power away. And I help them to recover fully from that trauma and become an embodied version of themselves. And that's why I want to talk with you today about this. If you're watching this video later, please just comment below to say hello and let, let me know that you're watching it. So I didn't understand the term embodied myself for a really, really long time until just recent times. And I looked it up in the dictionary today and it said to represent a quality or an idea exactly. And to me, that reminded me of like being an actor when you decide you're going to play the character fully. You're, nobody can really tell where you are anymore. You've become that character completely. And to me, embodiment means on the journey of, of personal development, it means you have become fully yourself in a very concrete, physical way. You know what I mean? You look like who you're meant to be. You act like who you're meant to be. You speak your truth. You express your truth. You're doing what you're meant to be doing here on the planet. You're born to the things that you were born to do. You're actually doing it. And I think that's why this is so important to understand that like, my clients want to be become the, the best and highest version of themselves. You know, they, they know that they're here for a purpose to break the cycle of disempowerment in their family, family line no matter what that looks like, you know, in term of, terms of what will they be doing, it doesn't really matter what they're doing. What matters is who they're being. That's what matters because you can talk the talk all you want, but unless you're walking the talk and actually making something happen, making a shift, making something tangible and real, you can spend a lot of years wandering around, just looping around and around and feeling bad about yourself that, you know, you've got all this knowledge in your head, but you've never been able to turn it into what you really want to. So I want to talk with you about why that is, that it's so hard to simply take an idea that you have in your mind. And Rhonda's saying it's so important to be you not just do you. That's exactly right. That's kind of where I'm going with this. It's like, and most people, most women even, who've been on the path for a long time, because of these little tricks that I'm going to share with you in a minute, these little bypassing tricks, they often don't know actually who they really are underneath these little tricks that I'm going to share with you in a minute. And that is definitely a journey I've been on throughout the last, God knows, 20, 20, 22 years. And I had a very interesting experience about a month ago where I realized that I had this vision where there used to be this big whiteboard above my head. And on the whiteboard was written in black writing all of my stuff, you know, all of my shit, all of my fears and my doubts and my insecurities and my crap and blah, blah, blah. It was all on this big board. And I've been wiping it away and wiping it away. And about a month ago, I realized that the entire board was not only clean, but it had completely disappeared. And all I was left with was me in this moment, right here and right now, with no thoughts of the past and no thoughts of the future, just here being me in this moment. And I was like, oh my God, this is what it must mean to be embodied and it's an amazing very freeing and liberating feeling because I'm not worrying one little iota 
about what anybody else is thinking of me or what I need to be doing to get people to please, you know, to be pleased with me or anything like that. So I recognize, you know, looking back, the resistance that I had for 22 years of being in my body is the same resistance that I see so many other women have. They're, they don't want to be fully in the body because, because of past trauma. That's who my clients are. People have had past trauma and never fully gotten over it, never, never fully gotten past it. It's because it wasn't safe to be in the body. It was painful in the body. So we left the body. And we also, in our society, we are very left brain dominated, dominated world. We live in a masculine world. And the ideal is to live in your head and live in your brain and live in that thinking mind. And unfortunately, so many of us get trapped up there forever. Hello, Di, how are you? So many of us get trapped up there forever. And we don't know how to leave there, which is very busy and noisy and negative, and get down into here, into our hearts, into our muscles, and actually take action and do the things that our heart is calling us to do, not the things that we think we should do to please everyone or just to survive life. Now, this just came to me. I was watching The Project on Australian TV the other week and I was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe this woman said that. The primary journalist on there, she's got blonde hair. I can't think what her name is. If you can remember, somebody tell me. She's one of the new journalists. She's a very well-known Australian journalist. And she said, she said, I have to admit I have a bully in my head all of the time. I have a bully voice in my head all of the time. And doesn't everybody else? Isn't that the way it is for women? And I nearly burst into tears because I was like, wow, you are a leader out there in the world and you're still experiencing that. And I totally resonate with her because I lived with that very loud, noisy, incessant bully voice in my freaking head for decades and decades and decades. And now my mind is just silent. It's like, whoa, man, I don't miss her at all. I don't miss her at all. But what saddens me is to know that most women who experience this living in the head, this noisy, crazy negativity, they think it's normal. And I used to think it's normal, but I'm telling you now it's not normal. It's not big. It feels normal because you've had it all your life, but it's not natural. And there's a big difference. And I, my heart went out to this journalist. I wanted to reach out to her and say, call me. You know what I mean? Because that is not the natural way. And when you take the commitment to embodiment, it's about coming back to what is truth, what is natural within us as human beings. And we were born love. We learnt fear here, but we were born love. So this conditioning, this fearful conditioning, that's just ripe all over the planet. We just absorb that. We think, well, this is just the way it is. I'm here to say it's freaking not. But I had to own all of these ways I was bypassing the embodiment journey and I'm going to share them with you there's seven common ways I've done them all I've excelled at them all and I see so many women doing this thing that keeps them looping around and around and around forever and never really feeling whole and real and actually creating what they want in their life so the first one is, oh, we know this one, the busy bee bypass, the busy bee bypassing. We're moving so quickly and so much going on and so much for everyone else. Often it takes an illness or a pain or sickness, something to knock us out to get us to stop, to get us to stop and be still. But we don't want to be still for too long because if we're still, we're actually going to hear what's going on inside us and we're going to feel the truth about what's going on inside us that maybe we don't want to hear. 
And maybe there's an intuitive little voice going, you're not listening to me, nor not listening to me. So the busier and busier and busier and busier we can be, the more we can just bypass that. You'll we'll go around that, we'll go around that, we'll go around that, right? If you recognize the busy bee bypassing, hello, Lorraine, how are you? Busy bee bypassing, put your hand up. Put your hand up. It's very, very common. And, you know, so many women, oh, I'm just so busy. I'm so busy. But why? Why? Why is that happening? Why are we doing this? And it's part of the conditioning. Well, that's if you're a good person and you're a leader and you're the responsible one and everyone relies on you and all of this stuff, we be, we, we fall into the illusion that that's who we're up, who we are, and that's who we have to be. But for me, I had to admit the truth that I was doing all of those things because deep, 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 deep down inside, I was scared that if I stopped giving, I would no longer be loved because I had a very deep belief that the only way to get love was to give and to give and to give and to give. Di's saying she recognises the Billy B, busy B, right? Woo, I had to let that shit go. And it's been a journey for me to realize that I have value and worth no matter what I do, no matter what I give. And when I burnt out two years ago, one of the hardest things for me to do was to say, I'm out completely and the only person I'm giving to is myself. I have nothing to give to anyone else. And that was scary because it was like, oh, my God, if I stop giving, if I stop giving on social media and giving to people and helping people, and who am I? Who am I? And will people go, oh, Nat, she's not very nice. She's pretty selfish. She doesn't do anything for anyone, right? <laughs> that was my fear and I had to face it. And guess what? Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. I went away, got well, came back, and everyone was still here. So, you know, it's about facing our fears. And this is why, this is why we don't want to go there is because it's uncomfortable in our bodies. And part of being embodied is means you're going to be powerful. That's the upside. But the downside is you're going to feel. And most people don't want to feel deeply and completely and to go through the feeling to get the gift, to get the lesson and come out the other side. So hence the busy bee. I'm going to give you a second one. The intellectual bypass. The intellectual bypass, the stuck in the head bypass. And I also call this one, this can show up as like processing with a friend. You know, something happens and you get all, you get uncomfortable. And the first thing you do is you want to talk about it and you want to go up into your mind. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me again? After all the work I've done on myself, why is this? Blah, 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 blah. Do you know what I mean? I should pick up another book. I should read another book. I should do another cause love. And it just goes on this. Or I'll talk, call my friend and we'll talk to her. We'll go around and around and around in circles about why is this happening? right? It's the mind. It's the mind. Hello, Coral. It's the mind. And a lot of people get stuck there for a really long time. And they know a lot of stuff. They know a lot. They understand themselves at an intellectual level, but they haven't dropped from their head down to their heart and into their body where they can be real and tangible. So that's the second one, intellectual bypassing. Um, where are we over here? Oh, the third one, very easy to fall into, is the positivity bypass. I also like to call this the love and the light bypass. You know, it's like this, and a lot of spiritual people fall into this. And I'm, I've, as I said, I've done all of these and been horrified to realize that I have. The spiritual and the positively and the love and the light one is like, oh my God, I'm, you know, going through, you know, something feels uncomfortable, but you know what? It's all going to be good tomorrow. It's going to be great. I'm just going to pray about it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it's anything to get away from the uncomfortableness. Because if you sat with the uncomfortableness, the uncomfortableness could, could say you need to take action. You need to do something different here. That's uncomfortable. And I lived like this for years. Years. I'm going to tell you a story in a minute. This come to me so funny. Now I'm going to tell you now. When I was in 12-step recovery programs from sex and love addiction many years ago, if you know 12-step programs, you know that the fifth step is writing a moral inventory of yourself and sharing that with one other person, at least one other person, and with God. 
So a moral inventory of yourself is all the stuff that you have done in your life that you're not proud of, that you secrets, things you don't want anyone to know, um, all of that stuff and good stuff, you know, stuff you've never wanted to admit about yourself, right? So I did this inventory and I had this inventory and I'm like, yep, I'm going to share this with someone. But my shame <laughs> kept me stuck and I kept looping into this, oh, you know, the right person's just going to show up, blah, 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 blah. I don't have to do anything. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen all by itself. And I avoided that. Do you know how long I avoided it for? Three years. <laughs> Talk about a bypass. I carried that for another three years. Another three years. Because I didn't really want to go there. I didn't want to expose myself. So I carried that pain with me for another three years. And then one day I went, I'm freaking done. And I did get still. And this little voice in my head, in my belly said, you know what? You should call this woman that I hardly knew. I hardly knew her. But we worked together. And this little voice said, you should call her. I'm just going to call her. Sally for now. And I went, why would I call her? Just just pick up the phone and call her. So I called her and I said, how are you going? She said, oh, I'm great, great, great. I haven't seen you for ages. You know, when are we working together again? Blah, blah, blah. And she said, how are you? And I said, well, actually, I'm sitting on some shit. I'm sitting on a lot of shit that I have been afraid to face. And she goes, oh, well, tell me about it. And I went, well... I'm in 12-step recovery and I told her my story and there was dead silence at the end of the other at the end of the phone and she went, Well, you just described my life. You just talked about you everything you said is my life. And she said, and no one has ever, ever known that about me. And I'm like, what the hell? And I went, Well, will you listen to my inventory? And she said, Yes, will you listen to mine? How crazy is that? But three years of bypassing it took me to get to that place. And as soon as I'd shared with her, it took me three hours to share my shit, the weight lifted, right? So this is the power of a bypass. So we talked about busy bee. We talked about the busy bee bypass, the intellectual bypass, the processing bypass, processing with a friend, um, the rescuing bypass. Oh, who knows this one? I just experienced this quite often, quite often. Do you like my story, Lorraine? I was so glad I got there in the end. Quite often I experience this, that a woman will come into my life and she'll go, oh, I'm so interested in your work. Oh, I went, oh, really? And she goes, yeah, I want to know all about it. And I go, oh, why is that? And she goes, well, I've got this friend. I've got this friend or someone in my family. Oh, she's in so much pain. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see her in so much pain. And I keep telling her she needs to do something. She needs to heal. She needs to, you know, work on herself. And I tell her about these programs and I tell her about these books and stuff. And I'm like, uh-huh. Because what's happening there is that person, the woman who's telling me this, is so outside of her body, she can't even see that the pain she's feeling is her pain. It's about her. And her friend is just mirroring it to her. But as long as she's focusing on, let me fix all these people out there. Oh, I've got to fix these people out there so then I can be at peace. No, that's your peace. You know, that's your shit that's being triggered. So I recognize that because when I was in, you know, full-blown full, full blown codependency, man, I was, I was fixing everyone. I was rescuing everyone. I couldn't understand why people just didn't want to do the work. But guess who wasn't doing the work? Me. <laughs> so funny i could laugh now it wasn't funny at the time so busy b bypass positivity bypass intellectual bypass in the head processing just talking about it rescuing bypass the numbing bypass oh who knows the numbing bypass i know this one well we numb in so many ways so many ways as soon as there are any kind of pain or uncomfortableness or fear or anxiety in the body boom we're out we're numbing. And this is totally unconscious for many of us. But I've numbed with everything you can think of. And now I don't numb at all anymore. And it's amazing. But you know what happens? 
I get to feel everything. <laughs> That's not always comfortable. But my biggest message that I share with the women who work with me, until you're willing to get comfortable being uncomfortable, you will never, ever become the woman that you want to be. It'll never, ever happen because the becoming comes through the muscles. Wisdom comes through the muscles. It's through doing something different. And whenever you do something different, it's uncomfortable because you're going outside of your comfort zone, right? So for me to learn to just sit with my discomfort and not reach out has been probably the greatest lesson of my life. It was not so long ago. Um, I could remember even just two years ago, the amount of times I would go, I'd go to McDonald's and stuff my face, then I'd feel bad about that. So then I'd go on to KFC and then I'd stuff my face there and then I'd feel bad about that. So then I'd go to a service station and I'd get chocolates and Coke and blah, 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 and just drown my sorrows. This all happened in the space of an hour. And then I would chuck all the rubbish away because I didn't want my husband to know. But you know what? The only person I was hurting was myself. The only person I was hurting was myself. It was because I wasn't willing to sit with myself in my discomfort. And I can tell you what, the journey of becoming an entrepreneur is an embodiment journey. Oh, I'm going to write that as a slogan. The journey of becoming an entrepreneur is an embodiment journey. You have to be willing to sit with discomfort and, and the unknown and your doubts and all of that stuff without reaching out. Because only going through going through it will you become it. And there's a saying, I don't know whether you've heard this before, be, do, have. Be, do, have. You have to be the person you want to be, even if it's just, you know, there's no evidence at all out there that anything's happening, but you've got to behave like the person that you want to be. And then you've got to do all the right things that you, you imagine that person would be doing. And only then will you have what it is that you want to have in your life. But as human beings, we want to get it around the other way. We just want what we want and we want it now. <laughs> we want what we want and we want it now. That's just human nature. That's just human nature and we just got to be kind to ourselves. Kind to ourselves. So the numbing thing, think about all the ways that you numb. Food, drinking, smoking, worrying, obsessing, all of that stuff. Anything that's repetitive, social media. Oh, my God, when I burnt out two years ago and I ended up leaving everything, I had to wean myself off social media and it was very painful and I had to be honest with myself about how much I'd been using social media to medicate my uncomfortableness. It was horrible and I just went off social media for about six months and went cold turkey. And now I have to be very, I'm very mindful of social media and when it pulls me Oh, I'll watch that YouTube video. Oh, there's another YouTube video. Oh, there's another YouTube. And I'll go, wait a minute, Nat, what's going on? Step back, step back, right? So that's an umming bypass. Okay, the other one and the last one is the most, um, most common one is the needing certainty bypass. Yeah, I'm going to do that thing. I, I know that I need to do that thing in my business, but I'm not going to do it unless I'm guaranteed that I'm going to get a result. So I'll just sit back. And that is just the biggest self-sabotage self -sabotage ever. And it's like when people come think about working with me, they're like, well, if I can you guarantee that my life is going to change? I'm like, well, I can guarantee you're going to feel a lot better, but you're the one who has to go out and make the changes that you need to make in your life. Nobody else can do it for you. And it's going to be uncomfortable initially to make those changes but without making those changes, nothing's ever going to happen and you just go stay sitting in your misery. So when people come and do, say, my Boundary Queen course, <laughs> that's interesting because it is that is an embodiment course, that course, because it's about how do I stay in my body, how do I stay grounded and not run away and not deflect and not avoid when I need to speak up and say something, when I need to put a boundary in place, 
how do I stay grounded enough in myself to do it and do it anyway, even if it feels really uncomfortable, even if people don't like it, even if it challenges all of the ways that people have thought about me. That's hard. That's hard. But this is why I do the work that I do because I know so many people have been like myself, been on this personal development journey for a really, really long time, but there's something missing inside and they haven't been able to take everything they know and actually live it and be it. It's because of the resistance to going back into the body. It's the resistance of feeling anything uncomfortable, the resistance of feeling any fears. And I, I believe that the greatest fear on the planet is the fear of fear itself, the fear of feeling fear itself. And I understand that because I, I ran from fear myself for many, 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 many years. Didn't get me anywhere, but I know what a waste of time it is now. Absolute waste of time. So what I want to leave you with here today is if you are someone who knows for sure that you have a purpose, you have a mission, even if it is just to be your highest version of yourself in this lifetime, you have to take the journey from the head to the heart, to the belly, to the body and actually be willing to do the things that you know you need to do to become the person you need to be. And it's going to be uncomfortable. No one can take that away from you. It just is. It is what it is. It can be easier when you take away all of the shit, all of the negative beliefs and the pain you've been carrying and the intense fears and things that aren't yours you let, let all that go and that's one of the first things I do with people. So you're trying to move forward with this heavy bag of shit on your back that you're carrying for everybody. It's not yours. Let's just put that down and you can move forward. But you need to be embodied. You need to be grounded. You need to be willing to do something different rather than live up in airy fairy land and wonder why nothing is changing nothing is changing so again the seven ways we we stay out of our body in resistance of being in our body because it's not comfortable is the busy bee bypass the positivity bypass the intellectual bypass the rescuing bypass the numbing bypass the projecting bypass and the needing certainty bypass if this has been at all um useful for you please like comment and share it I am going to put these notes together. If you want to get these notes, you can go to my website, uh, nataliemurray.com.au. Go to the free tab. Underneath that is a link that says join community. That joins you to my newsletter list. And you, when you get my newsletter on Monday, you will have these notes there. And you can have an honest look to yourself. Ah, oh, thank you, Lorraine. Thank you for sharing your journey. Numbing bypass is my number one, I think. Okay, yep, good one. Anyone else watching this, what is your number one that you think is your default that you go to first? It's your safety. It's your comfort. That's just a, and see the thing about these are all habits. These are all habits of behavior that we've developed over 50, 60. I only work with people who are in their 40s, 50s and 60s. These habits of behavior are deeply ingrained, so ingrained that they feel normal. And my job is to hold a big mirror up to you to say, is this working for you? Is this serving you anymore? Because often we can't even see our own self-sabotages because it feels so normal to us. It feels so normal to us. Rhonda's saying, I'm almost there. Bring me. Bring me. You've got to do the work. I'm always there. I'm always there. Bring me. I don't know what that means, darling. Give me some more information. Um, Coral, very clear. I think it did. Oh, I think I did for a year, for a year, kept busy till I got sick. Yes, you, you're not alone, Coral. So many women do that. And I have done that too. I had to burn it out three times to get it. It's not like the universe sent me a little feather and then a brick and then a truck. The universe had to send me a semi-trailer and then another semi-trailer and then another semi-trailer. And I'm getting up all the time going, it's just a flesh wound. I can keep going, right? That's how deeply ingrained my unconscious habits were that were resisting me going into my body. Oh, being me, Rhonda, that makes sense. Being me. 
So um, if you don't know me, I now offer a pathway for women. I've been doing lots of different things over the last seven years, experimenting, going through the experiment myself. Now, I, as I said, the whiteboard in the sky has lifted off my head. I'm very clear now who I am and what I'm all about. And there's a pathway that I, I, I support people to follow a pathway. There's no quick fixes, but I can certainly make it much easier, more effective and efficient and fun because you're with me and you're with like-minded women as well. And that pathway is called Freedom and Flow. And it's called the gentle path of the liberated woman because gentleness is the number one quality that people like me, women like me, need to uh, embody, for want of a better word, embody. Gentleness and patience because we're hard on ourselves, we push ourselves, we're hard on other people around us, we push our bodies. And for me, I knew that I was out of integrity because I could not stand here as a feminine leader and go, I love myself when I was treating my body like a trash can and like a second class citizen, that was completely out of alignment for me. And I knew that I couldn't go on in my work until I had resolved that relationship with myself and my body. And that's what I'm doing. And, and it's all kinds of interesting things are happening. And I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a bit of a, let's say, a bit of a party about it in a few months' time. But I can't say I love myself and I treat my, my body like a fucking trash can. It's not possible. It's not possible. That's part of the embodiment puzzle. That's what I'm trying to say. That's part of the embodiment puzzle. We cannot be in our power and not have our body fully operating, our body fully capable and functioning and healing and moving freely through the world. We're just in a battle with our body. That's not embodiment. <laughs> it's working against the body. And that's living in the head thinking, oh, well, I am my achievements. I am what I do for people. No, you're not. Our body is the greatest, greatest gift that we have. And I've only learned that, finally learned that in the last year or two, the last year or two. Anyway, I could go on. I've got endless stories to tell you. Um, anyway, my point is, oh, the pathway, the gentle path of the liberated woman. And there's three pieces to this path, three pieces. The first one is, well, they don't go in any particular order. I can tell you that. But you talk to me and I share with you what I feel you might need. And some people need all of the pieces. Some people feel they only need one of the pieces. It doesn't matter. How quickly people do the path is up to them because you need space and time to integrate everything that you've learnt. Coral says, my worst is my head worries that stop me now. Yes, your head worries. That's the intellectual bypassing. Do, 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 around and around and around and around and around and around. And that is also a way of numbing, numbing out, numbing out. But because, and I'm going to tell you the three different pieces of the puzzle, Coral, and why I do these three different pieces of the puzzle. The first one a lot of women need is the 12 week group course I do called How to Be a Boundary Queen because most people do not have good boundaries. They think they do, but they, do, they don't know who they are as separate from other people. They're exhausting themselves running around doing everything and are generally pretty angry and resentful about it. And even if they can't admit that out loud, it's showing up in their body. It's showing up in their body. And I'm, it's, I, I created this because I noticed that most people were creating boundaries from anger and fear rather than love and honor love and honor for yourself so there's a whole story there a whole journey there about how do i become someone who can stand in my power graciously and not cross other people's boundaries by putting them down blaming them all of those things that's a journey in itself but through the journey people become very aware of what their true shit is because one of those other bypassing Issues is projecting your shit out to everybody else. It's them who's making me feel this way. If only they treated me better, then I would feel good about myself. No, the way you feel about yourself is yours. Doesn't matter how what somebody says to you, if you get triggered, that's your trigger. So you can't say, so and so triggered me. No, you've got to say, I'm triggered. And that's what we have to unwind in the boundary queen course. And once people have done that, they get a greater sense of actually what the truth is 
about what that's happening with inside of them. That is not the responsibility of somebody else. So then I usually say to people, now it's time to do my six week one on one creatrix breakthrough process. And that what that is, it's that is about a reset. It's about hitting a button and coming back to who you were pre-trauma. I know that's a big statement. I know that's a big statement. But so many people have been locked in this self that they think that they are and they're not 100% comfortable there or happy there and believe they can't actually be any better than they are. So they say that where I am, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go along with that because this is as good as it gets, blah, 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 blah. But it is possible to reset your nervous system and your brain and your heart and your emotions back to the self that you were before shit happened to you in your life. I understand this takes an open mind, an open mind, but this is revolutionary and innovative and only for people born female, meaning born with physical, sorry, female bits, female sexual organs. So the lady who had her creatrix breakthrough with me yesterday, I mentioned that on a post yesterday, she said to me, I had no idea that this was possible. No idea. This is way, way, way beyond what I imagined was possible. In three, just three sessions, she, I think she's 59, she's turning 60 soon. She had been carrying this weight of all kinds of things, grief, fear, anger, insecurity. Her biggest belief was no matter what I do, I'll never be good enough. You know, that crap that had been following her whole life, it was heavy, man. But as she said, it's like, well, I could have just put up with this for the rest of my life and thought this was as good as it gets because, you know, my life's pretty good. I shouldn't complain. <laughs> Three sessions. that All of that was completely gone. She's like, I actually feel fucking happy for the first time in my life. I didn't even know what happy was. And I'm real. Who was that person before? And I showed her before video and she's like, I feel so sad for her. I'm so sad for her. Like, you know what I mean? This is about resetting your entire reality. Resetting your entire reality saved you fucking decades and decades and thousands of dollars and all kinds of stuff. But you've got to be willing to come back to who is that self in here? You know, that self that is not covered over with my conditioning and who I think I need to be and the good girl and the leader and the responsible one and all that. Who Take all that away. You know, so I love doing that. And those results are fully guaranteed most of the time, depending on assessment. But people have to be ready to go there because guess what? Once you've let that go, then you have to change your external world to then match up with who you are on the inside. So that might mean you have to put boundaries in place. You have to maybe move away from friends that don't serve you anymore. Um, change your relationship dynamics something's got to give whatever is not in alignment with who you anymore it's got to give and you will know what that is because your intuition will be so sharp because all the crap's been taken out it's like someone tips you upside down and pours out 60 years of stuff that you didn't even really know was in there you don't even need to know where it comes from it's like emptying a big bucket um, but you've got to be prepared to change your life and sometimes things get more uncomfortable before they get better that's just the way life is other people might like might not like you changing might not like you changing but by the time people come to me they are done they are done they are done like a dinner it's like i'm done <laughs> i'm done the old me that worried about what everybody thought of me she has to be she has to be put to sleep <laughs> i mean as in put to sleep as in have her power taken away and they don't know, she doesn't know how to do that, but she can do that in Creatrix just like that. Just like that. It's amazing. So that's the third, second piece that I wish every woman in the entire world would do for herself. And the third piece is the beautiful Gene Keys journey. And the Gene Keys is a self-illumination spiritual path. This is amazing. And sometimes people are going to need to do the Gene Keys before they can get to Creatrix. Because the Gene Keys is a mirror. A very accurate mirror to show you 
all of the collective shadow patterns that you are carrying. That means what you are carrying on behalf of humanity, the pain that you are carrying, that's hiding who you really are and hiding your true gifts and talents. It's hiding your heart. It's hiding your genius. It's hiding your love in relationships. It's hiding your natural path to prosperity. And walking that path of the gene keys is an unwinding and an unlearning. It's not a fixing yourself. It's an unwinding and an unlearning. And it's so deeply profound that I just had to pull a group of women together. And there's 12 of us at the moment contemplating this unwinding over six months. And we're halfway through it. And it's like mind blowing <laughs> because what it does, it shows you the ways that you are sabotaging yourself, holding you back, yourself back, all of that stuff that you are not even aware of because it feels so normal and natural to you. But the women who come to this Gene Keys world, they, there is a drive within them to become an embodiment of love, an embodiment of unconditional love. And that map shows you all the ways where you are not in love, you're in fear. So without the Gene Keys journey, I would not be doing what I'm doing. I would not have come back from my burnout, but the Gene Keys has shown me very clearly who I am, what I'm here for, who I'm here to help, how I'm here to help them, all of that stuff and help me to heal every relationship in my life. But those three pieces of the puzzle, you know, remembering who you are and setting those boundaries, coming back, resetting yourself and then in becoming that highest version of yourself through Gene Keys, that is a pathway. That is a very real embodiment pathway. And I'm proud to offer that. I'm proud to have that, to know that people come into my life and if you want to change, you will change. <laughs> it's not, it's just not even a question if you do the work, if you do the work. And that's always the point. But these days, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm being real. One of the things I learned through the Gene Keys was that I have a nose to sniffing out who are my true allies. Who are my true tribe? Who is meant to be in my world? And one of my shadow patterns of the past was I misjudged people and I wanted to like everyone and I wanted to help everyone and I wanted everyone to like me and all of that stuff. So I would give my power away and let people in my life, whether it be friends, clients, business people, whatever, who didn't honour me. And guess what? My two biggest shadows... My biggest shadow in my Gene Keys profile is, is the shadow of dishonor, dishonoring myself, dishonoring my emotions, dishonoring my intuition. So I've learned that the hard way. So now it's like I'm only allowing people into my world who deeply honor and respect and value me. That's it. And they respect, honor and value me enough to be sure that they're ready to do the work before they come into my world. And that is a loving thing to do. That is a loving boundary because... I only have so much time and energy to give. So, of course, I want to give it to the people who are ready to receive it. And that is a healthy boundary. And I own that now. I don't feel bad about that now. So, anyway, geez, that was a long story. I don't know where I was going with all of that. I'm just reminding you. Okay, and I know, I know where I'm going. Um, if you want the notes, join my email list via my website, go free, and then join community. And if you want to learn more about this embodiment process of using creatrix this private process you can go to my website under free scroll all the way down it says free masterclass this is an in-depth 90 minute masterclass therefore it is for people who are willing to sit and absorb this and have an open mind and maybe learn something about themselves it's not for people who want to intellectually bypass and Oh, just give me some more information. Oh, this isn't happening quick enough. Oh, moved on. You know what I mean? Moved on. No, this is for people who are going, yeah, I really want to make a change in my life. I'm prepared to sit and listen to this. And not only listen to this, feel how I'm feeling in my body as a reaction to what Nat's saying. Because what I'm saying can be quite confronting. Quite confronting. And it is because you've got to look in your own mirror. You can't change what you don't acknowledge about yourself. But you just have to say, is my life working for me? 
if it's not working health wise if it's not working relationship wise if it's not working business wise something's going on that you can't see you can't see and people pay me to help them to see <laughs> what it is in the mirror that they can't see and to be honest a lot of people look in the mirror and they go i don't want to see that and they turn away that's okay but the people who are willing to see that and go wow Look at that part of me I didn't even know was there. She's, I don't really like that part of me, but I'm going to embrace her anyway because it's through embracing her that I release my true me. Anyway, watch the masterclass if you're interested in, in this embodiment journey and taking what's in your head from your head to your heart and actually becoming that person that you want to be and moving beyond your trauma and moving beyond your story and moving beyond your shit. If that time is now, I really encourage you to watch that. I'm also starting to call in people for my next round of my Boundary Queen course. There's five people in that and we're going to, I'm going to do that around March, probably late March. Um, book a chat with me if you want to be a part of that. Everything, every, every to work with me, everyone has to talk to me. You have to have a private chat with me first and then we'll all help you go, this is where I think you need to start. So the Boundary Queen course is coming up. That is profound. And um, my Gene Keys course I'm starting the 12 month course in July. So if you're curious about the gene keys, again, you can go to my website, look up the free tab, and there is a, a video there that you can watch without giving me an email that'll tell you how to get your gene keys profile and tell you a bit about it. And you can go and you're curious. Well, to how do you know to what program to start with? Well, that's why you come and talk to me. Everyone's got to talk to me. Um, that's what we do. Yes, yes. Um, I know, obviously, I know what I'm offering. I know what the programs are and I know where people fit. And this, I'm not going to suggest to you to do something that doesn't serve you. That's a waste of my time and your time. So um, I'm very honest with people. I'm very honest with people and I listen to my gut. And often it might say, we'll have a 30-minute chat. And um, I might say, you know what? We need to have an initial conversation first. We need to have a deep, honest conversation and pull this apart and see what's really going on for you. Where, where you're, where's your head at? What's your attitude? What do you need most right now? All of that. And then from there. So often, if I'm being really honest, Lorraine, the free chat, we'll meet. And if I feel like, yep, I think I can help you, the first step is often to have an in-depth conversation then for an hour or maybe an hour and a half. And then from there, will have a better sense of what's right for you first. But as I said, it's different for everybody. It's different for everyone. I'm here to help you to find your easiest and most efficient way to have a feminine rebirth, so to speak. Um, so yeah, book that chat with me, Lorraine. But there is no, absolutely no obligation on my part or your part. We both have to go, yeah, I'm feeling this. This is right. Because as I said, I only welcome people into my world because I've only got so much time and energy. Welcome people into my world who I truly, genuine, genuinely feel in my heart are my tribe and it's their time. And um, if it's not, I will do my best to refer you to something that's more appropriate for now. But I want to thank you all for um, commenting and listening and, and sharing. I can't believe I've talked for a night, 50 minutes, but, you know, I can get on a roll. I could talk forever. <laughs> But right now, I've got a Zoom meeting at one o'clock, so I've got to go. Thanks for listening again. I'd be curious to hear from you. You're reflecting on those bypassing, um, seven top bypassing things. See which one um, you do the most and be gentle and kind with yourself. And the next time it starts to happen, all you have to do is notice and breathe and go, oh, there's that bypass again. <laughs> Let me come back into my body. Let me be gentle and patient with myself. Gentle and patient. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you on Monday. Hello. Thanks, Rhonda. Oh, this is exciting. On Monday, I'm going to put the before and after video of my lady who just had her creatrix breakthrough yesterday. She's, I'm loving her because she's like, share it with the world. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Facebook. I love that. There's not many people who are brave enough to share their true story with anybody and everybody. So she is an absolute gem. She's an absolute gold. So I'm going to put her video together on Monday and share it on Monday or Tuesday um, before I go away. And guess what? I've got to tell you this. I'm going to Hawk's Nest for a week. And Hawk's Nest was the place where I found that dead man on the beach two years ago. 
we're going to the same beach. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. And I don't feel any discomfort around it at all. It's just, wow, that was an interesting experience. And I, I worked through the trauma of that. And I found the lesson and the gold in that. And it changed my life for the better. So there you go. Anyway, watch out for that video on Monday. Book a chat with me or watch the masterclass first. That would be great. Hi, Coral. Thanks, thanks, Coral. Book that chat with me, Coral. That you, you know, book that chat. Just go ahead and do it, and I will do my best to send you in the right direction. See you soon. Bye.